I recently read a very interesting book in the help, self-help vein. This is a classic book. It's been 80 years in print. How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. How to Win Friends and Influence People. This is a classic um, self-help book on business relation, on relationship in general. The human conditioning, the human condition, working together with others. I really enjoyed it. You know, you can get this book uh, 15 for $15.91. $15.91 Canadian, folks. You can pick up this puppy. And, you know, I'll have a link on uh, below in the description. You can get it on Amazon, $15.91. I guess in the pit of my stomach, I know there is a value to this book. Very interesting read. A lot of great principles and ideas. But there is also something that sort of saddens me. The cynical outlook that can be derived. You know what I mean? The belief that people are motivated by self-interest. Cynicism. It's right there in the title. How to win friends and influence people. You hear that and... There's a couple ways of looking at that. Sounds a little cynical. How to win friends and influence people. You're looking to influence people. You have an agenda when you deal with people. You want to influence people. But the flip side being how to win friends and influence people. Win. Winning someone's friendship, winning someone's approval and admiration, to win someone's attention. It's a little bit different than how to manipulate, how to control, how to deceive people and influence people. You know what I mean? How to win is a very appropriate outlook in regards to this book there is just some inherent collateral damage in the vein of cynicism self-importance there is just the collateral damage of that it is a little you know it is it can be looked at as a little contrived but it's also intended to be one to prove to others the value of your friendship, to prove to others the value of your influence, how to win friendship and influence, right? So yeah, I definitely found the book insightful, informative. It's been 80 years in print. This is like one of the first in the self-help vein. And a couple quotes and interesting pieces from the book that I'd like to share. For example, um, what the book is basically about in a nutshell, you know, this is um, a little excerpt from the book. Do you know someone you would like to change and regulate and improve? Good. That's fine. I am all in favor of it. But why not begin on yourself? From a purely selfish standpoint, that is a lot more profitable than trying to improve others. Yes, and a lot less dangerous. Don't complain about the snow on your neighbor's roof, said Confucius, when your own doorstep is unclean. 
yeah, that's a lot of wisdom, you know? A lot of people float through life trying to change people and, you know, tweak people and manipulate things to their own way of living when it's like, well, what about your doorstep, as Confucius said, you know? You, you complain about the snow on your neighbor's doorstep, but your own, your own doorstep is unclear, unclean. Further on here, um, if you and I want to stir up a resentment tomorrow that may rankle across the decades and endure until death, just let us indulge in a little stinging criticism. No matter how certain we are that it is justified, when dealing with people, let us remember we are not dealing with creatures of logic. We are dealing with creatures of emotion, creatures bristling with prejudices and motivated by pride and vanity. And that in a nutshell is very true. And that in a nutshell is why I am happy to discuss this book, to promote this book, to recommend this book. But there's a part of me that's very sad in that it doesn't bring just a, it's not, you know, it's, it's not like a light read, you know, it's not like uh, the secret where it's like, just imagine and willfully picture and, you know, picture things of positivity in your life. Like it's, it hits some very deep rooted truths about human nature. You know, when you are dealing with people. We are dealing with creatures of emotion, creatures bristling with prejudices and motivated by pride and vanity. We are not dealing with creatures of logic. I first kind of stumbled upon this book in an audio format. I think I was on YouTube a couple years ago. And I, I was listening to the audio version of it. And I, I, or maybe I rented it from the library. I don't know. But I read like the first chapter a couple of years ago. And I remember that passage. And I remember the idea of cynicism. This book really awakened in me the overall, the overall viewpoint of humanity. It's pretty cynical. We are motivated by self-interest, generally speaking doesn't mean there's not a lot of beauty and good and you know grace to be discovered but this is what we're dealing with you know we are creatures of emotion bristling with prejudices and motivated by pride and vanity that's any other idiot i've ever met for the most part i mean myself included but then again this book goes on to confront and deal with this issue in a very diplomatic and Christ-love manner. Do unto others as you will have done unto yourself. There's a lot of great value and hope in this book. For example, um, some other passages. Um, You know, the diplomacy intact of this book, which is very important when you're dealing with your friends, your family, and your business relations. Um, here's a little quote worth reading. If as a result of reading this book, you get only one thing, an increased tendency to think always in terms of the other person's point of view and see things from the other person's angle, as well as your own. If you get only one thing from this book, it may easily prove to be one of the stepping stones of your career. Try honestly to see things from the other person's point of view. Honestly see things from the other person's point of view. Considering others, considering other people's point of view, honesty, how to win friends and influence others, you know, 
It's that honesty and it's that empathizing quality. That, to be honest, is very lacking in this world. Most people don't look for the other person's point of view. It's a dog-eat world. Dog-eat-dog world, buddy. Smoke them if you got them. Fuck you. This is what I want. These are my needs. This is my opinion. This is what I want. Okay, but why don't you take a second to think about what the other person wants? Because believe it or not, most people, if not everybody, don't give a fuck about what other people want. Most people are preoccupied with what, believe it or not, they want. Ding, 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 ding. Yeah. That's what people are interested in. What they want. Not what you want, but what they want. And, and some of the value in this book is recognizing techniques on how to honestly deal with people and consider the other person's point of view and how incorporating um, principles found in this book, how to win friends and influence people, little principles that Dale Carnegie outlines in this book, you can use to honestly communicate with people and have a consideration for your fellow man's point of view. Very interesting. Um, and in regards to that, you know, arguments. You know, uh, there's always an argument when you're fighting for your point of view. Well, here's the problem with arguments, you know. If you argue and rankle and contradict, you may achieve a victory sometimes. But it will be an empty victory because you will never get your opponent's good will. So figure it out for yourself. Which would you rather have? An academic, theoretical victory or a person's goodwill? You can seldom have both. You may be right, dead right, as you speed along in your argument. But as far as changing another's mind is concerned, you will probably be just as futile as if you were wrong. That he quotes the Buddha. Buddha says, Hatred is never ended by hatred, but by love. And misunderstanding is never ended by an argument, but by tact, diplomacy, conciliation, and a sympathetic desire to see the other person's viewpoint. That's mega. That's mega important and useful and relevant. Tact, diplomacy, seeing the other person's viewpoint understanding that in an argument sure you can have an academic win a theoretical win i showed you let me tell you my point of view and how i'm gonna tell it to you i'm gonna lay it on the line to you pal this is what i think blah 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 okay you turned you told that person off you won you showed what a big man you are you showed what a strong woman you are by yelling and negating and cramming your point of view down another person's throat. Congratulations, you're a fucking asshole. Because that's how the other person's going to see you, even if you're right. Wow, what a fucking asshole. That's human nature. We're not dealing with creatures of logic. We're dealing with creatures of pride, vanity, and emotion. Even if the other person's right. You ever had that situation where it's like somebody's obviously wrong and they're on your case about something and then you point it out to them. Hey, look, you're wrong for what you're doing. This is what you're doing and you're wrong for doing it. And here's why. And then they just stop and look at you. They got no words. But it's all in their eyes. Even when you're right, sometimes. That's why it's so important to have tact, diplomacy, see the other person's viewpoint. <clears throat> it's not exactly easy. Then we go on here. Um, this is one that I've been trying to work on. See, you can see me doing it already. Smile! 
Um, you know, only the world would be a better place if people put this into motion. The expression one wears on one's face is far more important than the clothes one wears on one's back, except if you're shopping on Amazon and you want to buy this uh, Hanes Henley beefy t-shirt, 100% cotton, you know, nice fit, nice thickness to it, $15.99 on Amazon, link in the description below. But generally speaking, the expression one wears on one's face is far more important than the clothes one wears on one's back. Actions speak louder than words, and a smile says, I like you. You make me happy. I'm glad to see you. An insincere grin? An insincere grin? No! That doesn't fool anybody. <laughs> we know it. It's mechanical and we resent it. I'm talking about a real smile, a heartwarming smile, a smile that comes from within, the kind of smile that will bring a good price in the marketplace. People who smile, he said, tend to manage, teach, and sell more effectively and to raise happier children. There's far more information in a smile than a frown. That's why encouragement is a much more effective teaching device than punishment. Yeah, smile. It brightens the room. It, it helps people lower their guard and communicate. It's good for your health. You know what I mean? You're only as healthy as you feel, you know? Smiling. People rarely succeed at anything unless they have fun doing it. This industrial leader doesn't put much faith in the old adage that hard work alone is the magic key that will unlock the door to our desires. I have known people, this uh, person said. I have known people, he said, who succeeded because they had a rip-roaring good time conducting their business. Later, I saw that those people change as a f Later, I saw those people change as the fun became work. The business had grown dull. They had lost all joy in it. And they failed. You must have a good time meeting people if you expect them to have a good time meeting you. Totally. You have to have a good time meeting people if you expect them to have a good time meeting you. You ever go to like a store and the salespeople, you know, oh, oh, I'm staring at the ground, shuffling around like zombies. It's like, yeah, that's where I want to shop. A depressing uh, atmosphere where nobody looks at you. You know, would it kill you to smile? That's a little hard to do, though, because I'm the kind of person where it's like, I like to stare. <laughs> so like, Smiling and staring. <laughs> like, sometimes, you know, like I've been trying it lately. It's not exactly easy. You know, I'm walking down the street, I'm smiling. I'm like, staring at people, they're just like... <laughs> Plus, we're living in this era where you have to wear a mask. Let me just yank down my mask here and potentially affect you with COVID-19. Ah! <laughs> but you got to smile, folks, you know? What else do we have here? Oh, yeah. Admitting when you're wrong, you know? That's another doozy that most people don't want to do. They'll never admit it. They'll go on acting like a retard. Just as long as their precious pride is intact, you know? check this out um so what's so funny about this one is um if we know we are going to be rebuked anyhow isn't it far better to beat the other person to it and do it ourselves isn't it much easier to listen to self-criticism than to bear condemnation from alien lips <laughs> alien lips Say about yourself all the derogatory, take two. Say about yourself all the derogatory things you know the other person is thinking or wants to say 
or intends to say, and say them before the person has a chance to say them. The chances are a hundred to one that a generous, forgiving attitude will be taken, and your mistakes will be minimized, just as the mounted police did with me and Rex. He gave an earlier example of some instance where he admitted his faults. So admitting when you're wrong, that's very important. Most people don't, and then subsequently they are resented for it. There's nothing worse than, well, there are a lot of worse things in life. <laughs> but, you know, one thing that's really disgusting in a person's character is when they're a hypocrite. When they're going around giving orders, talking this, talking that, then when they fuck up, they shit the bed. They don't admit it. That's not the way of leadership. That's not the way of building a relationship. People can't get on board that. So it's good. It's good to admit when you're wrong. It, it breeds a sense of understanding and connectivity between people. You know, when you admit that, hey, you made a mistake, well, then that loosens me up to admit, hey, you know, maybe I'm not so perfect either, and together we can work on this. So with all this helpful advice and tact and diplomacy that you can learn from this book, um, as, you know, as my gut tells me, there's just something somewhat cynical about it, something kind of contrived about it, even though I agree with a lot of it and I learned a lot from it. There's something that in me feels a little, you know, like I said, contrived, something a little bit manipulative about the book. Well, um, this kind of sums up... Uh, what it really is, you know, how to really use this book and be effective with it. Um, let me see here. So a little snippet. Ah, yes. So remember, we all crave appreciation and recognition and we'll do almost anything to get it. But nobody wants insincerity. Nobody wants flattery. Let me repeat. The principles taught in this book will work only when they come from the heart. I am not advocating a bag of tricks. I am talking about a new way of life. Compared with what we ought to be, we are only half awake. We are making use of only a small part of our physical and mental resources. Stating the thing broadly, the human individual thus lives far within his limits. He possesses powers of various sorts, which he habitually fails to use. In the words of psychologist William James, that little, that little bit at the end there. But you see, this is not a bag of tricks. This is like, this is, this book will only work when the, with these principles come from the heart, not, not a bag of trick, not a phony baloney kind of hogwash smoke and mirror thing to blow up your neighbor's ass. You know, it's dealing with people in an honest thoughtful manner trying to see the other's viewpoint you know some Christian love and principle there do unto others as you will have done unto yourself so yes this is a great book definitely worth the read if you want to gain insight into how to deal with people more effectively it's it's a it's a useful tool in business it's a useful tool in personal relations how 
To Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Definitely recommend that. And again, the link is in the description. You can get it on Amazon in paperback version. Uh, $15.91, you know. Definitely worth the read, folks. Highly recommend. And I'm smiling. And I'm staring. <laughs>